I would love to sit with each of you individually and kind of hear where you're at, hear your story, answer your questions, things like that. Um, because, you know, the topic of transition and moving on from high school into college, you know, adulting, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. Uh, you, you're, you're, uh, you're growing up so fast. And, uh, and, and it's a real deal. And, and I think that for most of us, probably in this room, um, you're a part of a youth group, you know, or you've been involved in youth group or, you know, some sort of thing. You got here. Uh, very few of us by this time were, you know, forced to come, uh, hogtied, thrown in the back of a bus or something to come to Steubenville. Um, for most of you, you've been here a couple times, right? Yeah. So you, you know, you, you're, you're familiar with the, you know, the strange culture of uh, Catholic conferencing, you know, like I saw some dude with like a superhero suit on or something. Yeah. Exhibit A. There's a shark or something around. I don't know. You know, it, it's, it's, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a strange deal because when you, you know, when you're part of youth group culture and you're part of conference culture and, you know, you, you, you're, you're doing this thing, you feel like you have a home here, you know, you can be as weird as you need to be. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, yourself and you're accepted and, you know, you're clothes pinning people and things like that. And, and it's all good here until you get out there into college or into the real world or into the military and people are kind of looking at you like, what is going on, you know? And uh, so it's a real deal and I, I, I'd love, like I said, I'd love to, to sit with you all individually and hear where you're at. Um, but, but again, we're going to keep it sort of interactive. So a little bit different from other keynotes or workshops, uh, it, man, if you've got like a question and you, and you want to, like, raise your hand, I'll, like, see you, and then when I finish the, hey, you moved, or did you bilocate? <laughs> wow. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really, yeah. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, so if you, so I'll see you. As soon as I finish the point, then I'll, then I'll look at wherever direction there was a question, something like that. So we'll keep it interactive, and at the end, the hope is that you will, that you'll generate some of the content, that you'll ask, and I'm going to invite um, the two uh, ladies from Franciscan to come up, and we're going to try to just answer questions pertaining to, you know, college and, and moving on past high school. Does that sound good? All right, good. So, we live in a culture that, uh, that is obviously um, heading in a wrong direction, right? Growing up in America, I think that, that uh, you know, for all the illusion of like, you know, uh, you know for, for God, you know, we're a Christian nation and the whole thing, like, you know, I think for most of us, we understand that those values have been sort of dissolved in the final, you know, in the, in, in the, in the last uh, couple decades. Um, they might still hang on in your family or in your church, but, uh, but it's a rough, rough world out there. Um, when you have a lot and nobody's, nobody's hungry, you know, there's, there's no poverty and there's nobody that's really, you know, beating down your door uh, to arrest you for being Christian, it's easy to say that you're Christian. It's easy to say, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm Christian, I, I, I love God, but then go about your life whatever way you want to go about your life. And for those of us who've been uh, you know, who have benefited from youth group and benefited from conferences and things like that, we, we've sort of, we've skirted some of those things. Not that we don't fall into sin or don't fall into the temptations of the world, but we always kind of know where we can fall back, amen? Like we got this, we got this place where we know that we're accepted and we know we're loved, and if we need to go back to that thing that's going to give us strength or encouragement, we're going to go back there, right? But there's a, there's a tendency to become dependent on that. Right, and, uh, and, and, and Paul addresses it this way. He says in the first letter uh, of St. Paul to the Corinthians in chapter 3, so if you have your Bible, open it up. In 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul, uh, he, he, he's talking to the Corinthians. And as you know, like Corinth is like, or maybe you don't know this, but Corinth is like New Orleans. Anybody from New Orleans? <laughs> She's like, hey, is that good or bad? Is that? I don't know. Spit on my gum. Corinth is like New Orleans. I mean, it, you know, that's, that's the closest thing. Or Vegas, you know. It's just, you know, there, there are these, you know, you go there to party. You go there to, in, you know, enjoy the world. And, uh, you know, anything that you, you, your heart desires or, you know, your flesh desires, you can go there. So Corinth is a kind of a, kind of a rough town, okay. And, and, but, but Paul has preached there. And Paul has come in, you know, to, to relationship with these folks. And, and they're doing the best they can. Um, but he addresses them this way. He says in, in chapter 3, he says, But I, brethren, could not address you as spiritual men. I, 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 I can't talk to you like, as, as your spiritual men, but as men of the flesh, as babes in Christ. Okay? So he's like, you know, you, you're, you're, you're coming along well, but I, I still can't talk to you like, like men. I still can't talk to you as women. I'm still talking to you like your babies, you know? Like, you know, remember when you were a baby in, in Sunday school or whatever? And it was like, Jesus loves you. And you're like, okay, this sounds great. You know, like, that's how, he, that's how he's addressing them. And he says, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even yet, you are not ready. Okay, so he's talking, about, he's talking about babes. He's saying, like, you're, you're a baby. You're, you're, I, I can't even feed you solid food yet. When I, when I come to you and I want to bring the gospel to you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still just feeding you milk. I can't give you solid food. I can't give you the real meat and the content of the gospel because you're still, you're still babies. You're still men of the flesh, and I can't really address you as spiritual men. Now, if, if you know... I mean, if you know history, right, like, or just the human anatomy, when Paul's talking about, I fed you with milk, okay, he's not talking about cow's milk. He's not talking about going and getting a carton of milk from the store and then feeding them that. I mean, he's talking about mama's milk, okay? Like, he's talking about, I am, I, 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 I am, I'm, I'm breastfeeding you. Okay, now I have I have seven kids. I told you that earlier, and and uh, you know my wife has not only carried those babies in the in her body, but once she delivers those babies out of her body, she feeds the baby with her own body. Okay, like women. Father Lewis said earlier today. He said we're all wonderfully made. Ladies, you are you are magnificent. Okay. Like, your bodies are absolutely miraculous and beautiful, okay? Um, it, it, it's absolutely incredible, okay? So, um, Paul's saying this. He's saying, I can't feed you solid food. I have to feed you milk. And I, 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 I don't want to be crude about this. I don't want to be, you know, like, I don't want this to, to come off wrong, but for, for a lot of my life in ministry, this is the way that I've felt in the United States when I'm encountering, you know, youth group culture and conference culture. When we show up, uh, we, we, we can't. We can't give you the solid food, you know? I'm coming to these things like this. Like, here, guys, come to mama, okay? Because you're not ready. Because, because for, for, for most of our culture, we're, we're men of the flesh. And then there's this big myth in the United States that, like, I can have both. You know, like, I can have the world. Like, if I'm going to follow Christ, well, it doesn't really, I mean, Jesus didn't really mean sell everything and give it to the poor. Oh, yeah, well, what did he mean? Well, you know, I mean, it's like a, you know, it's a hypoth. It's a, it, it's not really that, you know. No, I think, I think there's a point to this. Well, I can have both. I can be in the, you know, it's in the world, not of it. I can still have my stuff. I can still, be, we're, we're, we're beyond that. And so, as missionary disciples, as going forth, like we have to, we have to ask the question. Okay, like breastfeeding 
is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's, it's absolutely the, one of these just, this amazing part of, of, of human biology. To a point. To an age, okay? And I apologize if you were that, like, 10-year-old, you know, like, at the pool, like, mama, you know, like. <laughs> but there's a certain, would it, we, can we all agree that there's a certain age where it begins to be inappropriate, Right? I mean, I think our longest, you know, went like, you know, somewhere around, you know, 18, 19, 20 months. And that was even old, right? And the question we have to ask ourselves is how, how old are you in Christ? Like how long have, when was that moment when you made the decision for Christ? Is it three Four, are, you, are you seven years old and still relying on the milk of conferences? Are you, you know, eight, nine, ten, you know, 15? Are you, and is it inappropriate? See, there's a certain age when, when every child, every kid, you know, that, that I've ever had, okay, and I know it was the same with you, and I know you've had, you know, younger you know, brothers and sisters and stuff, and there's a certain point where you can't even feed them anymore, okay? Like, they're two, three years old, and they're like, nah, like, I do it, you know, I'm going to do it, and, they, and they're terrible at it, you know, and they're just like putting it on their head, and like, I, I can't, I, you know, like, I'm going to do it, you know, they can't do it, but they're trying to do it. It is just this sort of natural thing where kids, they want to feed themselves. And, and the reality is for, for you, and I need you to look up here. Look at me. Look, you cannot, you, you, you will not receive the nourishment for your soul beyond this point if you are continually relying on the milk of conferences and youth groups. You will have to begin to learn how to feed yourself. The food is there. The nourishment is there. The, the, the banquet is spread for you. But you cannot rely on speakers to open up the word for you. You're going to have to open up. I, I love this idea. Like we, we, we use the simplest scriptures, okay? And it, it is so funny because I think that, you know, the scriptures are kind of like Pez. Okay? Like, I feel like it's like Pez. Sometimes, you know, if, if my kid was to come up and be like, hey, you want some Pez? And he just had, like, the, like the wrapped up, like, you know? I'd be like, no. I want Pez. Pez is gross. But if he came up to me with Darth Vader, you know, he'd be like, you want some Pez? I'd be like, sure. You know what I mean? I feel like that sometimes. I mean, you know, like, we need to be reading the scripture every day in our life, you know? And they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, I guess, you know? But then, like, you know, uh, any Hickman comes and it's like, you want some scripture? And everybody's like, yeah, right? You, got, you, you guys, like, we have, got, we have got to begin to learn how to initiate feeding ourselves. Because you will not last. You will not last throughout, you know, past high school if you're continually, because I hear it all the time. Young adults graduate from high school or they go into college and you're just like, there's nothing for me. It's like, yo. Like, I don't know what God wants me to do with my life. I'm like, hello. Like, it's all there. And so moving forward, there's, there's no point in talking about, well, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and you got to be a part of this, and you got to do this, without your decision to get off the teat, to grow up. I'm sorry if that hits you right at the heart, but, like, the reality is for you, at this point in your life, it's time to grow up. It's time to stop relying on, on the things that are being fed to you and to learn. And, I, and I'm not talking to everybody. I know that there's some of you out there that you know. Like you know how to, you know, like butcher that meat. And you know how to marinate it. And you know how to throw it on the grill and cut it up. And you, you, know, you know how to do that with the scripture. And you know how to do that with the Catholic teaching. And you know how to do that with the church fathers. I, so I, I, this isn't a blanket statement. But, but if, if you're in that boat where you're like, I don't, I don't know the first thing about that. I'm not sure, you know, how to feed myself. Well, it's time. 
It's time to learn how to do that. Because you will not survive out there. And I'm just telling you, you are not invincible. Just because, you know, you have a, a, a T-shirt from every year, you know, that you went to Steubenville, and just because you wear crosses, and just because you maybe, maybe you have a tattoo of a cross, like, it does, you are not invincible, especially in, you know, university and college culture and young adult culture. It will be hard. And so you need that. You need that food. And, uh, and, and God's made that available to you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three specific ways that you can begin to, um, to feed yourself. And then, and then we're going to open it up for some questions. First thing, okay, and I'm going to call these life hacks, okay? Three things. Life hack number one. Um, take your Bible every night and open it up. And do not read it, okay? I know that sounds strange, all right? I want you to open up your Bible to any, any type of, you know, anywhere, okay? You start in the letters. Start in the letters. Start in the gospel. Open it up, okay? And put it on top of your phone, all right? You put that on top of your phone and then give your first thought to God in the morning, I don't know about you, but man, it's, it's hard. When my phone, it's my alarm clock, and then it goes off, and then I hit. Do you ever notice that, like, I think iPhone is trying to, like, make me hit snooze? Like, the snooze button is so much bigger than the stop button. Have you noticed that? It's like, where is the stop button? Like, I don't even know. Snooze, you know? Like, but, like, you know, you've got, you've, you've got that thing. It's going off, and in the morning, the first thing, I, you know, the first temptation I have is to see what happened. Like, see what my friends did. Where did they go? What's, you know, what, what are they doing? Instagram, you know, Snapchat, whatever it is, I'm looking, you know, news. Who texted me? Who called me? All those things. That, all those thoughts go off. And by the time it's, you know, I'm like, I think about God or I think about, you know, man, I should pray this morning. It's too late. So life hack number one, open your Bible, put it on top of your phone, okay? And then every morning when it's time to wake up, do not touch your phone. I mean, hit, hit stop. Do not touch anything else before you read the scripture. This is, this is, this is what God says. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple, y'all. God's real, and he spoke. And it's right here. This is it. Okay, this is his very word. And so if we want to develop that relationship with Christ and continue to feed ourselves and, and, and be nourished on the word, we've got to read the word. And so life hack number one, put that on top of your Bible, put that on top of your phone, read the Bible every morning, read the scripture every morning. It doesn't have to be long. It could be one sentence. It can be two sentences. It can be a paragraph, okay? So that, do that. Stay close to the scripture. Um, second thing, okay, um, you are... I'll say this as a blanket statement. It's very general. I'm not, uh, this isn't the only way that Jesus saved me, okay? He saved me uh, in, in many ways from, from really going off the deep end. But knowing the responsibility as a missionary disciple, knowing that I had a job and a responsibility in the world changed my life. Had I not felt a call to ministry, to witness Christ in the world, I don't know where I'd be, okay? And let me break that down. We are asked to love God. And when, when, when Jesus say, well, what, what's the most important thing in the law? He said, love God with everything that you have. Love him with, with you, know, you know, love him more than your, your shoes, your job, your promotion, your grades, your parents, your girlfriend, boyfriend. Love him more than anything else. And then love your neighbor as yourself. We're not asked Okay, to, to, uh, to, you know, uh, catechize every person that we sit down with, you know, like you get in an Uber and like, hey, man, do you know Jesus? Like, I, I don't think that's what Jesus meant, okay? He meant love. He meant smile. He meant be generous, be hospitable, okay? So life hack number two is love everyone within a 10-foot radius, okay? Simple, not easy, but guess what? You know, like if you're only depending on loving and, and being in a relationship with people who think like you, 
You're done, Zo, man. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. Okay? We have to learn how to love people who don't behave like we do, who don't think like we do, who don't vote like we do, okay? You gotta begin to learn how to love those people that come into your 10 foot radius. So this life hack speaks to this idea of, look, don't, don't pick and choose who to love. When you get on campus or you move on into the corporate world, don't pick and choose who to love. It's way easier to love everybody than to pick and choose. Like, do I love you? Should I not love you? Should, should I hang out with you? Whatever. No. 10 foot radius, everybody that comes into that space, okay, you are called to love. Very simple. Don't think about, man, I'm going to go be a missionary and go do all this crazy stuff, and I'm going to walk on a campus, and I'm going to evangelize everybody. No. Just love your 10-foot radius. Don't get ahead of yourself, okay? Stay right there. And then the third thing is um, just, a, just, just a reflection on your life, okay? A very simple question. If your life was a movie, would you watch it? And if the answer is no, you are not participating in the fullness of life that God is calling you to. And, I, and again, I, 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 would, I would hate to let that, you know, oh, man, that, that's too hard. It's too rough. Like, but here's the reality, right? Great stories gives God glory. And if you're not living a story that would be a, a worthy read, you know, or, or, or you're not living a, a movie that would, that would be worthy of a watch, chances are, you know, you have the wrong ambitions. Because silly ambitions like, you know, like here's a movie for you. Let me, let me just lay it down. Here's a movie for you. There's a kid. He sees a Mercedes when he's eight years old. He says, I want a Mercedes. All right. So he studies hard in junior high. He gets into a good high school. And he studies hard in high school. And he gets in a good college. He studies hard in college, and he graduates with honors, and he gets a job, and then, y'all ready? He buys a Mercedes. Isn't that an awesome movie? Yeah, this sucks. I mean, it's the worst movie ever. I want my money back, you know? But how many of us, okay, and I'm not saying it's a Mercedes, but I'm saying it's success-driven, this whole storyline in America, like work hard, work hard, work hard so that one day you can have. No, forget that, man. Live your life now. Life hack number three, live a great story. If, the, if, if your day is, you know, is just like, man, all I'm doing is studying and working for this thing that's, you know, somewhere in the distance and maybe one day. Like, that's not living in the presence and that's a boring story, okay? Eight years ago, I, I sold everything that I owned and I, I, we became missionaries, our uh, our whole family. Uh, in about three months, I'm selling everything again, and I'm moving to Guatemala for a couple months to, to, study lang to study Spanish. Because I can, and it's a cool story, okay? So for you, what is that? What does a great story look like in the day, right? Um, you know, and, and, then, and then sin, okay, and sin and temptation, that kind of thing, that'll just take care of itself, okay? Like, Nobody wants to watch a movie of, uh, you know, somebody looking at pornography, right? <laughs> like, that's just a terrible, that's a terrible movie. Uh, so, so don't do that, because that's not a good story either. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So life hack number one, stay close to the scriptures. Life hack number two, uh, love everybody within your 10-foot radius. And life hack number three, live a great story. And you're going to be fine. You guys are awesome. You're going to do a great job as you go forth from here. So how many of you are going into college right now? Like, you're heading into college. You come on up. Ladies. Come on up. Let's see. I'm going to invite um, Maura and Bridget up as well. You're going into college. And then how many of you are going into the military? Anybody going into the military? All right. Sweet. Taking it. Yeah. Um, it always gets a round of applause. Y'all are stuck together. Um, how many of you are just going to hang out and you don't know what you're doing yet? Anybody? No, raise your hand. It's good. You're going to work, I hope. You're going to work. Do some work. Right on. Great. Um, and then, of course, I know that there are some incoming uh, seniors right here. So we're going to take some time to answer some of your questions. If you've got questions like, man, I'm, I'm going to a public school. What's the best advice? Or I don't know where I'm going to school yet. What do I do in this situation? It's up to you. All right. So the, the next uh, 10, 15 minutes uh, are going to be you're going to drive the content. All right. So right here.
You like watching scary horror movies. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. I mean, you know, so her question was, uh, should she kill people? And uh, I, <sighs> no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. It's not a perfect analogy, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, 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 stories have, all stories have the same elements, okay? Like whether it's a horror movie or Finding Nemo, the idea is that tension is built around an ambition, okay? So that, that's how you, and, and usually there's a villain. There's something against, coming against that main characters. Don't be the villain. Yeah. Be, be the person that's trying to survive. Those are the great stories, right? Somebody's got ambition. Um, there's tension building into the climax. Climax, resolution. Any literary uh, geeks out there? You know what I'm talking about, okay? So then the, then, then the conclusion, right, is, is not, it's actually not, you know, like, um, it's not actually what's on the outside, it's actually, it's actually deeper, right? So like Finding Nemo is a perfect example of, I mean, Pixar does the absolute most beautiful job at telling stories. Um, and and they're, you know, the resolution isn't actually, you know, Marlon Finding Nemo. The resolution is Marlon understanding, you know, how to be a better father, right? And Nemo, Nemo understanding and accepting that. So um, yeah, so don't, yeah, don't kill people. That's, that's, uh, that's not good. Yeah. Yo. How do you know um, you're doing what God wants as opposed to what you want? Do you have something to say to that? I do. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, was kind of, I think this happened last time you came up. I just answered all the questions. Think of something to say. Okay. Um, God will speak to you through your desires. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. I was going to say pray. Yeah. Pray. Um, that's something that I've asked myself a lot as well. I think that's a question that is really, it gets very muddled in our life. And that's something just this past year I've really come to realize. Like, we have these natural desires. You know, when you get hungry, that's because it's time to eat. You know, when you get tired, it's time to go to sleep because our body is in sync with those desires. And what I've realized is that when I physically ask Jesus, like specifically word for word, that prayer, Jesus, make my desire so aligned to your will that what I crave is what you want for me. And then truly after time, I mean, maybe not overnight, but in time, he will work with that if you are giving that to him over and over. And then pretty soon you'll start to find, like, Jesus, I want what you want. And he makes that clear, and you'll feel that, and you'll know that. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I think to that point as well, like, being a dad, I just want, you know, I think if my kids were, like, talking to me like sometimes like how I talk to God it's like what thou do you desire of my soul you know like like I just be like what just go play like have a great time you know what I mean like there are things you know I remember when I discovered that there was a skate park in my neighborhood you know I was like whoa skate park like why am I sitting indoors looking at Netflix like when I just go you know so live life like be you know li live life to the full find those play play have a great time God God loves when his children have a great time here on the planet. I mean, it's so many gifts. So, um, so do that. As far as like the big decisions go, I mean, discernment is real. And one of the things that I've relied on in my past is, is the advice of trusted others. So make sure that when you're praying and when you're seeking your own, you know, like, okay, God, like what my, where, my desires align to your will. Also, Seek out advice from trusted others, okay? Like your priest, your mom, your dad, people who know you and know what's best for you. That, that, that um, you know, I wish my kids did that more. But, so. a little, one little, um, my quick and sweet prayer when I'm, you know, trying to make a decision is, Lord, take away from me all that takes me away from you. And that's been very true in my life. Aww. Yeah, in the back. You have to stand up and project. After combat, 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the guy to answer that. <laughs> I mean, Satan sucks. I, I, every morning I tell him he sucks, you know? I tell him to go to hell. It's just, it's, it's where he belongs, man. It's like, so I, I, think, I think continuing to hope in the Lord, I mean, for me, spiritual warfare, I, I try not to, like, read too much about it. I, I've found that, like, the less I know, the easier my life is. So, um, so yeah, so as far as spiritual warfare, I'm not the guy. I mean, these ladies might, might be involved in that, but, but, uh, but there is, you know, a priest in your life who can, t- who can talk to you more specifically, and, and especially the chaplaincy. Um, the Archdiocese of the military is, you know, it's the largest diocese, Archdiocese um, in the United States. Yeah, I mean, they, um, uh, Archbishop, I was just with Ar- Archbishop Brolio, and uh, he's, he's an absolute uh, monster uh, of, a, uh, of a man. So, um, yeah, so the chaplaincy is going to do a great job there, too. Um, if your question pertained to ministering and serving people who might be experiencing spiritual warfare, um, one thing that I've experienced actually working with a ministry called Dirty Vagabond, it's an inner city mission organization, okay, which is Catholic, but not in name, if you will. So um, working with these kids who, getting them to even understand the concept of God, a higher being, isn't really the primary purpose of that, of the, of the first encounter with them, right? Um, working with people who are from a place where they just by how their life has panned out they've been around a lot of spiritual warfare um the conversations and the ministry of this is really just kind of getting them to understand their own human dignity you know so if they 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 themselves are in a place of spiritual warfare and or are just around it in their life just helping them get to the point of you need to love yourself love those around you value your life um you know has always been just a great foundation to starting to work with those people, if that helps. Yeah. Thanks for joining up. Yeah. Yeah, right here on the left, yeah. Yes. I lost you there at the end. Stand up. Can you stand up? Thank you. Burritos. Uh, honestly, like you don't have, like you don't, there was, there's this thing with like when we, think, when we think of friendship, we think like winning souls. And I don't know about you, but that's sometimes one of the most, I mean, you're talking about Dirty Vagabond. I mean, Adore, we use the same sort of principles. Like the idea, you know, of, of winning a soul, you know, like I'm going to be friends with you with an agenda. That is some of the, that's, like, that's repulsive, man. Like that's like somebody trying to sell me, you know, uh, what are, they, what are people selling now? The um, oils? Essential oils and stuff. Like, like, you know, it's like, hey, man, what's going on? Uh, let's hang out sometime. I'm like, oh, cool, you know? And they're like, yeah, I don't want to tell you about uh, doTERRA. Is it doTERRA? That's the thing? Yeah. Like, that's gross, you know? So I think that, I think that uh, friends, you know, like, fr- like making friends with people who don't have the same value or don't understand their relationship with God or even where you're at, I think that, the more we love in those situations and the more that we're still hanging out, even though that they know, they know where you stand on their life decisions or, you know, what they're doing, but you're still going and having a burrito with them without agenda, you know, without trying to, like, advise them or do anything like that, slowly. But we've had, we've had a, a dinner at our house for eight or almost nine years now. Every week with our neighbors, our neighbors come over and they eat, they eat a meal with us. And it, it was three years in that one of my neighbors, I mean, he's like, looked like he had fallen on a tackle box kind of guy, you know, uh, with the piercings, everything all over his face. And he, um, after three years, finally asked me, you know, he came over, he's like, dude, I've been coming here every week for three years. Like, when are you going to tell me about Jesus? And I was like, right now? Can I tell you about Jesus now? You know, like, so I think, I think just continuing to love, you know, and, and, and you know, people in that, in that circle, um, you know, and again, like it's that 10 foot radius saying, I just love you. I'm for you. I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering you on. I'll buy you a burrito. Um, I'll, I'll be your friend regardless of, of where you're at. And I think that's the way that Christ lived. Amen. Like he, he, he didn't delineate. He, his, his love was unconditional 
and, and it didn't rule out anybody, uh, prostitutes and, and, you know, and tax collectors and fishermen and shepherds and all kinds of people. Uh, that, that's, that's what we're called to be, you know. So, um, so continuing to love them without agenda, that, that would be my biggest thing. And that's going to go for all y'all. And y'all know that uh, in school, you know. Um, but for me, I, I, I really had to go to a place like Franciscan to, 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 to really, I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a boot camp for me, you know, really training me up to, to you know, to be, to be a missionary disciple. Yep. So the, yeah, so the, so the uh, question is, if you're going somewhere where there's not a lot of resources for your faith, um, how do we still grow? And again, I think, you know, back to what I was saying, is, you know, in the life hack is that you will, you will not survive unless you figure that out in your situation, okay? I mean, I know that, you know, my daughter's, you know, my oldest is 15, she is like Google master, you know, like, I don't know what, why do you search? You know, I'm adding all these words. She'll find it so quick. And I think that for most of you, the information is out there. The resources are out there. Um, the, you know, there, there are tons of great websites and things like that for Bible studies, life teen, you know, um, focus. There, there's a, there's a million different things that you can do, uh, in order to, to, to learn how to feed yourself. Cause that's ultimately what it is. We can't keep relying on the programs to feed us. We have to start to learn how to cook for ourselves, just like you'll actually have to learn how to cook for yourself more than a PB&J. If I can add one little thing to that, I would say for your initial search is just find a church because if there is one thing to not skimp on in any way, it's the sacraments. So don't miss a Sunday mass. Like Annie said, we need our food. That's your food. That's going to be that initial thing, and that also may be what leads you to the people that have the Bible study or to the group of friends that's going to go out and do the kind of stuff that you do want to be a part of. So don't miss out on that. Stay close to the actual person of Jesus. Find an adoration chapel. Find a parish that offers reconciliation on a regular basis, and that, that can be a really helpful foundation. Where are you going? Dallas or where? Cool. Yeah. We have, we have an idea for you too. <laughs> Great. All right. One more. Oh, no. I can't do it. Uh, somebody just, yeah. Who, who's trying? Okay. What's that? That girl? Yeah, right there. Okay, she's been raising her hand for a while. Yeah. And then we'll be, we'll be here for a little bit. So if you've got specific questions you want to come up and ask, we'll be here. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. So, her, so she has a friend who's asking her about Jesus, um, and she wants to know how to bring up Jesus without scaring her or t- teaching her about. It. So, God at the ascension, you know, Jesus said, like, t- you know, go and baptize them. That would be super scary, right? Like, like, all right, here come here, line up, everybody, all my friends. I know you came over for Chick Fil A, but I, we're gonna have some baptisms, you know, like, like that. That would be that would be terrible. Um, but but he but he fought, he said he said. Teach them everything <laughs> that generated a lot of. Um, teach them everything that I taught you, right? Teach them everything that I taught you. And what did Jesus teach us? I mean, ultimately, if you were to narrow that down, right? It's to love. It's to love. It's to sacrifice and serve others. And so you can preach Jesus without even saying the name of Jesus, okay? Okay. So continuing to love her or him, like continuing to love them in a way that is, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's excessive, you know, indulgent. Why, 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 why do you keep calling me and, 
checking on me and things like that, that will, that will initiate to her understanding of who Jesus is by the way that you live your life. Yeah, I would say pray and don't worry. Uh, don't, don't, don't stress about, look, like if, we're, if, we are, if we get tied up in the idea that we are somehow responsible for bringing people back to the faith or bringing people to Jesus, we're going we're gonna to live our life just in constant anxiety. God asks you to love him with everything that you have and to love those around you. So pray and don't worry. Don't, 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 don't think that there's some sort of like magical solution of bringing people back. I promise you. Like people ask me all the time. I'm sure they've asked you and they've asked pe- you know, speakers all the time. Like how did you get into that? And honestly, like honestly, like I can say honestly, I don't know, okay? Like how do you get from here to up on the stage? And he, I don't know, okay? I began to live my life in a way that was radically in love with Jesus and, and his church and other people and people started to want to hear, they wanted to hear from me, okay? At a certain point, it's like, hey, would you say this or that? That's how that happens, okay? So, so striving for that thing before you're doing the, the initial thing, which is like loving God and loving others, is, is kind of backwards. So don't worry, don't worry. Everything's going to work out, and God's got it. Uh, the, the greatest thing, and we're going to talk about it later uh, on this weekend, but, but the greatest thing of all is, you know, is that, that he does the work in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, so having a relationship with God and loving others um, in, in the Holy Spirit is going to eventually do that. God, it, it's been awesome. Um, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. 